Hey everyone, my name is Cooper. Today I'm going to be taking you through the seven components of the ultimate productivity system. Now, the reason that I like to think about productivity systems is because I think that they're more resilient than habits or motivation. If you have the motivation to do something, you'll be able to do it for a while until that motivation dies down. If you have a habit, you'll be able to maintain that until something breaks your habit. Life happens, habits don't stick forever. But if you have a system and you maintain that system, you'll be able to keep that going through habit breaks and through motivation dips. Another thing to note before we get into this is that you can do this all physical or you can do it all digital if you want, except for one of them, you do kind of need to use the physical for that. But I prefer about an 80-20 split in favor of the digital and this is just because I like the convenience of being able to go across devices and have essentially the same experience. Without further ado, let's get into the seven systems that you need to be ultimately productive. First is a note-taking system. And the reason you need this is that you learn a lot, but you don't always retain a lot. Think about the last book that you read. Can you recite to me every single sentence from that book? Probably not. What you might be able to do is tell me three golden nuggets that you yielded from that book. Now, even those with more time will become more hazy. And that's why we need a note-taking system. You might have even been able to get five to 10 nuggets from the book, but you're just not able to remember them now. But if you were to store them all into a note-taking system and be able to review that frequently, you'd be able to remember significantly more of what you read. The overarching idea here is that your brain is really good at coming up with and synthesizing ideas but it's not really good at remembering them. And luckily for us, we've come up with technology to help us with this. Whether it be a physical notebook, like I like to carry around a moleskin with a pen, or it be a digital system using Evernote, Notion, or Rome Research, anything like this that if you're in this space, you've probably heard of before. The key thing here is to organize things in a way that makes sense to you. You could copy the perfect productivity system or the perfect note-taking system specifically, but if it's not easily usable, then you're not going to use it and it's basically like you didn't ever set it up at all. So make sure that with your note-taking system, it's structured in a way that makes sense to you and in a way that you'll use. If you're interested in learning more about this specifically, I'd recommend Tiago Forte's Building a Second Brain. Uh, really goes into the nitty gritty of building your own system. Next is the file storage system. Now, this is the part that kind of requires the physical as well as the digital, mainly because you have uh, a lot of files that are strictly physical and some files that are strictly digital today. Uh, the strictly physical are like your passport, your birth certificate, uh, if you're in the US, a social security card, things like this. And the strictly digital are like emails and stuff like that, digital documents. But either way, you're gonna need a way to store these. So first I have a file cabinet that I store most of my stuff in physically. And then I also carry around a file for storing documents when I'm on the go in my backpack. And when I'm on my desktop or my laptop, I have a file hierarchy, which is my main storage folder. And then I have work related things, school related things, and personal related things all in three subfolders. And that's basically all the files that I use on my computer. I know that the computer comes with a bunch of standard folders, but I really don't make use of those. Another thing to note here is that if you are using the digital system, one of the coolest things you can do is back those up to the cloud. Now, this does present a little bit of a security risk if you're, if you're storing some super personal files, but that's not something I'm doing very often. In fact, I don't think any of my super sensitive files are backed up to the cloud right now. But most of the things in my three main files I just described are backed up to the cloud using Google Drive. Now you can use Google Drive, you can use iCloud, you could even use Dropbox, the classic. There's a bunch of different services you can use. And if you're interested in that, uh, I can do a deeper dive into that in a later video. Next is the event management system. So this is really just a calendar. You can do this physically and put it in a place that you're going to look at it frequently, or you can do it in a planner that you carry around often. But I find it best to use 
use a digital calendar. And the reason for this is notifications. You can get push notifications when an event's coming up. You can remind yourself of friends' birthdays a week in advance so you can get them a gift or two weeks or whatever. You can get a reminder two hours before an event so you can start getting ready for the event. It's really just, to me, the best way to organize events. Next is an email management system. And this is where I have one tip I haven't seen anywhere else I don't believe and it's something I've done for the past five years and has come in very very handy and that is having a second email to sign up to all of those promotional systems whether that be when you go to a restaurant and they want you to sign up for their rewards program same with stores whether that be when you can't get out of a conversation and you need to give them an email before they'll leave you alone this second email comes in clutch and I'd highly recommend having one yourself. Now, two more rules for the main inbox. That is to set up rules. You don't need to look at every email that comes into your main inbox. If you have credit statements that come in every month, but you only review them once every three months, you can automatically move those into a file and out or a folder and out of your main inbox. So you never even have to look at them. And finally, I know you haven't done this even for your main email, unsubscribe from newsletters that you don't read. It's something we all do. Emails get sent around on the internet daily. If you signed up for one person's email list, they have probably added you to another at some point. And that's just the way that it goes. But go through, take the time, it's gonna be a pain, but unsubscribe from each thing individually. You can use systems for this, but then they have access to all your emails and that's not something I'm into. But there are systems out there that'll automatically unsubscribe you from those lists. Uh, if that's something, if time is of the essence for you and that's something that you're interested in. Next is a task management system. Now this is just a to-do list that you're gonna check daily and keep updated throughout your day. I use Todoist to manage my tasks and have recurring tasks that come every week. This is mainly for maintenance or cleaning and things like this. But once I start my day, I'll write down my tasks on a piece of paper because sometimes the context switching of going to the Todoist app or looking on my phone at the Todoist, sometimes that introduces too much fluidity and I'll get distracted doing something else. So I use Todoist to mainly manage my tasks and have things organized. But then when the day comes, when I have a set of tasks to do and I'm really deeply focused at work, I'll go ahead and write that down on a piece of paper and have that physically next to me. Next is a password management system. Now this isn't a promotional segment or anything. I see a bunch of these promoting password management systems or companies or softwares, whatever the correct term is. But I use 1Password. I like it because you have to connect to a server and also have the master password and also verify it through a third source. I used LastPass before and when I used it maybe three years ago, they didn't have that same capability, but maybe it's something that they've done since then. Also, LastPass was recently breached, so I can't currently recommend LastPass. I, I'm sure they've upped their security since then, but that's not something that I would currently recommend. I've heard nothing but good things about Dashlane and Bitwarden, uh, although if I remember correctly, there was some kind of breach at Bitwarden or something else, whatever it was, please, I don't know the details, do not come after me password management companies. And finally, the seventh system that you need is a maintenance system. This might be the most important of all of them. And the reason for this is that the perfect system is nothing if you don't use it. I've built this perfect system out before and I've known what all the components are, but I've put them together in a way that a productivity YouTuber told me to, or I saw in a guide, or I downloaded off of one of those sites that have Notion templates and I didn't end up using it because it wasn't organized in a way that works for me. So something that you want to do is make sure that everything's organized in a way that works for you and that you will use. And if you find yourself not using it, you need to organize it differently. And second is that you need to maintain it. You can go a week without using your system, but you still need to do that maintenance. I personally set aside time every Sunday to go through all of my systems and make sure it's all up to date. And that's something I'd highly recommend. I like to do it right before the week begins. Saturday's acceptable, even if you wanted to do it on a Wednesday, it's gonna be better than never doing it at all. Once you have all these systems in place, your productivity will skyrocket just because you're not wasting time on the organizational aspect of everything. Hopefully, with all of this, you'll be able to have enough time to watch my next video. Hit that subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.